All right. Trump and the left. The talk of the world this morning is something that happened on MSNBC at six o'clock. Let's listen. Over the past week, Joe and I have heard from so many people, from political leaders to regular citizens, deeply dismayed by several of President-elect Trump's cabinet selections, and they are scared. Last Thursday, we expressed our own concerns on this broadcast and even said we would appreciate the opportunity to speak with the president-elect himself. On Friday, we were given the opportunity to do just that. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. Now, we talked about a lot of issues, including abortion, mass deportation, threats of political retribution against political. Um, Dan, how will the left feel about that? I mean, they're just looking at social media here. They're split. I mean, I think there are some people that think they went there because they fear being uh, prosecuted uh, and they're doing it, you know, simply for ratings. Um, and other people who think the party needs to kind of move past calling Trump Hitler and a fascist and start actually engaging uh, with the kind of the other half of the country. So my bet is the answer lies somewhere in between. You know, they are business people and uh, MSNBC continues to struggle a little bit. Um, and Trump was gold for them in 15 and 16, uh, or at least part of 16. Um, and I think they do recognize that like what they did in terms of just trashing the hell out of them didn't didn't work with ratings and it didn't work politically for the party. Yeah, uh, they're my close friends, I'll say, for those who don't know. Sean, what will MAGA think about this and why did Trump do it? I think MAGA will be kind of split the same way the left is. Some uh, There are some people who <laughs> say, hey, Trump, Trump gets to do what Trump gets to do. Here's my problem with this. When you ended the clip, Joe says afterwards, we still, we told him we opposed him on this. We opposed him on that. We opposed him on this. If they wanted to come down and say, hey, Mr. President, we bashed you. We said you were wrong on all these issues and we were wrong and you have the right now to govern and we'd like to open up communications. First of all, I still say get in the back of the line. There are people who put up yard signs. There are people who made phone calls. There are people who fought hard for President Trump. They get to shake his hand first. Not these people who spent seven years, as Mika said, trashing the guy, lying about him, defaming him, right? So you go to the back of the line before you get to come, jump it and come up to Mar-a-Lago and, and shake his hand. But it wasn't that. Joe said, we told him to his face that he was still wrong. We agree, disagreed with him. So this was a pure transactional ratings play. This was Joe Scarborough realizing that his ratings are down 40%, 49%. Comcast wants to spin them off and them worried about whether or not they're going to continue to afford their place on wherever it is, Nantucket, Palm Beach, all those places. This was a pure transactional play. And there's no one that is more transactional in the world than Joe Scarborough. So I, I was frankly disgusted by this. Um, I, I, I think... Trump wants them to atone for it. And it was pretty clear by that comment that they have no desire to. So, so again, talk a little bit. Hold, 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 hold on. Sorry. Go ahead. You go. I was going to say my sense is for Trump. This was like dining with Mitt Romney in 16 and getting photographed. He knows who the beggars are. And it, it I'm sure it gives him, you know, a great pleasure to see that Joe and Mika came to kiss the ring. Like for him. It's but, a but that's my point, Dan, is that they didn't. They came and then they well, turned. they did. They can them. say what they want, but he knows. I know. Like, you know, they came to see me to make amends with me. And they called me Mr. President. Right. Like, end of story. So, Sean, do, you, do your Trump imitation. Do a stream of consciousness of how of how he would think about why he's waiting for them to show up. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Mika comes down all the time. They came in with Joe and she said, Mr. President, I want you to marry us. And I said, I don't, I don't know how to do it. And then, you know, Joe came in and he says, he begs me, he gets down on two knees and says, Donna, please, please let me marry her. I know I need your blessing. And I gave it to him. And now they're horrible to me. <laughs> all right. um, do you think Trump got out of the meeting what he wanted? I think he got what Dan said. He wanted them to come in. He probably made them wait 15 minutes. And he walked in and said, oh, you guys were wrong. You've been so horrible to me. 
And they said, you know, well, we wanted to open the lines of communication. And uh, I mean, yes, he got it. But I don't think he'll reward bad behavior like that. I do think it's interesting it didn't leak. It happened Friday and it came, they announced they did it, which I find a little, it's a little bit of deference to them. Well, I think that you, it's actually, I think that's a great point because right now, I mean, I don't know how you can't, you can, having been down there last week, you can't leak anything. I mean, there's not even a, I mean, you can't un, not leak something. Um, yeah. But I will tell you that I think that's important. They probably just thought we want to get ahead of it with our narrative before he says it. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what he says about it when he says something about it. Um, oh, I, so, I imagine after this, yeah. after that statement, there will be a truth probably about. Yeah, it could happen during this program. Yeah. And it's going to say something like Mika and Joe came to beg for forgiveness. The last time yeah. she came here, she was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think your prediction might come true very soon. 